Okay, so this is going to be my review of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, so yeah, in, it, and as you can see in the title, uh, no spoilers. So there, eh, there might be minor spoilers, I take that back. So minor spoilers, but nothing too major. Um, so yeah, but nothing like, oh, it's going to be like, oh, but actually, yeah, it's just going to be minor spoilers, but nothing too big, like nothing too major. Um, the only thing I might spoil is the connection with the villain, which I'll get into, because I feel like not everyone's going to get it. No one's going to get that re Not a lot of people are going to get that reference with that villain and why it kind of matters in the Ant-Man story. So I'll get to that in a moment. Anywho, so, let's talk about uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. What did I think? Well, it's a nice little, a nice little palate cleanser after the emotional ass-kicking that was, Ant uh, that was An Avengers Infinity War, right? This was exactly what I kind of needed. Um, a nice little dessert cake after the giant meal that was uh, Infinity War. So, yeah. But, granted, it does go back to bases, basics a little too much. It does do the whole humor when there's supposed to be a serious moment, or... and a little underdone villain, but here I give it a little more credit. I know people are saying, oh, the ghost wasn't a great villain, the ghost wasn't a great villain, and we had Killmonger and Thanos, and we've been having, like, a good rush of villains like Ego and Hela to an extent. Uh, but yeah, the ghost feels kind of weak when compared uh, when you compare it against Thanos and Killmonger. Um, two of the MCU's biggest villains as of late. But I'm going to go a little into why I don't... I think the ghost is getting a little hate. Granted, I don't think she's a great villain, but she's a little different from what we've been getting. Um, I can see where they're coming from with her. Um... Anywho, so Aunt, so uh, Paul Rudd continues to work, uh, be really good as uh, Scott Lang. He really plays the underdog role really well. He really does play the underdog role um, spectacularly. Um, Evangeline Lilly as Hope is really good. I like their dynamic. Although it does feel weird that they br when they bring up stuff like, oh, you know, the times we train together and all the times we laugh together. It's like, this isn't CW. This isn't DCCW. I want to see that shit. Um... So, yeah. Um, Hank is, you know, um, uh, yeah. Everyone's still great. The cast is, uh, is, uh, spectacular. Um, Michael Peña as Louise is still great. If you love that, those little bits he did of explaining stories, um, there's a, they bring it back, but it's so well done. Like, it's so hysterical. Um, and yeah, I will forgive that Ant-Man and the Wasp... I will forgive it that the um, the humor in here feels right for Ant-Man. It's kind of like... It does feel... Like, it doesn't feel a little out of place. Because Scott's kind of a mess up in here. And it kind of shows. I do like that there is more of a family dynamic with certain characters. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne is Lor as um, Bill Foster, a.k.a. Black Goliath. Unfortunately, you don't get to see Goliath in here. Um, but they do reference it a lot. Um, now, let's get on to the ghost real quick. The ghost is an interesting character in that we haven't really had a lot of sympathetic villains. I mean, you can see where Killmonger's coming from, but it's all, you know, and the same with Thanos, where you can understand them, but at the end of the day, you're still like, yeah, no, you're still bad. It, it, the, the ghost is kind of like, she was caught in the wrong place, wrong time, and they give that kind of sympathy to her. Um, so the only minor spoiler I'm really going to give here is that um, she is the daughter, of, in this continuity, yes, it is a woman, uh, which I didn't have a problem with, because the Ghost is really just an Iron Man villain that that um, was treated more... If you read the comics, the Ghost is like this known, this uh, nameless uh, anti-capitalism uh, supervillain who mostly fought Iron Man. Um, but in here, it's a girl who is the daughter of a character named Elias Starr. Elias Starr in the comics is Hank Pym's archenemy from the comics called Egghead. So I was like, Elias Starr, I've heard that. Oh, it's Egghead! So yeah, that's the only real major spoiler I'm going to give you guys um, in here, is that I thought it was interesting how they tied in, and, uh, because really, Egghead was the only real villain. And I like what they did with the ghost in that, you know, it would drive someone crazy if you can't touch anybody, and it and she's in physical pain since she was a child, so, um, being merged with the quantum realm and phasing in and out of existence. So that would drive anyone crazy, honestly, and making her uh, incredibly violent. Um, yeah, if you had to be in that much pain and being unable to touch anyone is would probably drive some people crazy. Like, that would definitely drive some people nuts. So, I can forgive the ghost, but granted, she's not as strong as... You can feel the sympathy, 
but character-wise, she's not as strong as, like, Killmonger or Thanos. But then again, she had a tough act to... Ghost, the Ghost had a tough act to follow with, um, trying to follow up with Killmonger and Thanos. Because how was the Ghost going to follow up compared to the guy who just snapped his fingers and wiped out half the MCU, more than half the MCU? Also, yes, there is a reference to um, Infinity War, which after all the happiness and fun, it, it, the mid credit scene reminds you, yes, Infinity War still happened. And there were people going, I remember the theater, and, and again, like, the mid credit scene, it does tie, I'm not going to say how it ties into Infinity War, but there's that moment where everyone was in the theater and was like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was a grim reminder that Infinity War happened. Um, so yeah. Um, but anyway, I like the stuff with the, uh, they don't do enough, uh, do a lot with, um, uh, Scott's ex-wife or the stepdad, which, which is fine. I, you know, Judy Greer's just okay. I do like, um, I will like, and I've talked about this before with, um, the first Ant-Man film, I remember talking about with the last Ant-Man film, was that in? It, I like how they're not treating the um, the stepdad as the typical jerk stepdad that no one likes. Um, no, he's treated as just a member of the family, and it's it's pretty nice. Like there, are, like I and I like that. Like it's a subtle thing of yeah, not every step you know, step parent is an asshole. So I like how they've kind of shown that in this fam in this family dynamic. They haven't really like gone too deep into it. But I like how that's been. Like, they, they show that, yeah, not every step-parent is an asshole. Um, so I like that. Um, anywho, so where was I going with this? Um, any, yeah, the action's really fun. I really like how they play with the whole size changing in between. I will admit that it does kind of lag at points. I, it will lag a lot, especially, like, there's one character, the ghost was enough. Did we really need, um... Did we really need a weapons arms dealer? Did we? Because he just felt like that was the real boring villain. The ghost had something. Like, you felt sorry for her um, because Hank's, you know, of Hank's arrogance and what happened to her parents and what happened to her. Like, you could do a whole story with her. Um, but the other character in here, Sonny? Yeah, fuck that character. We just needed him for the chase sequence. That was really it. That was, um, that was really all he was needed for, to be honest. Um, yeah, the, um, the action's fine, the sto the, um, the, uh, characters are all good for what it is. Having Michelle Pfeiffer as Janet was pretty fun. I liked what they did with her in this, uh, I like what they, actually, there is something, because, and again, I'm not an astrophysicist, and I don't claim to know a lot about physics, but they have some, she, they do some odd things with Janet, and I was like, does that work? I mean, I know in this continuity she's been trapped in the quantum realm for year, for over 30 years, but really, do, is that how it's supposed to work? Um, is, alright, I know, like, it obviously changes you, but that's how it goes? I'm sorry, what? That was, that was my thing, was that they did some weird things with Janet, where looking back on it, I'm like, I don't know if that works. And I know it's supposed to be, like, comic and movie logic, so, you know, F logic, this is, you know, screw the rules, we have com uh, you know, we have superpowers, I, I'm well aware of that, but at the same time, I'm, I'm also like, um, I don't know where you're going with this, and I guess we won't figure it out until, like, after Infinity War, so, yeah. Anywho... Um, not much else to talk about with this other than, yeah, it's a neat little, it's a nice little palate cleanser, um, for the, you know, emotional ass-kicking that was Infinity War. Um, it does go back to basics a lot in, in your typical Marvel movies, but I, it's a little more for, forgivable. I will admit that it does lag at a few points, um, here and there, but on a whole, the action's really, really fluid, and it does, there is a really good chase scene. Um, the ghost is a fine villain, again, but keep in mind, you know, the fo the two previous follow-up acts were, re were really, it was really hard to follow with the, you know, big purple guy who committed galactic genocide. So, yeah. So, you guys tell me in the comments below, what did you guys think of Ant-Man the Wasp? Did you guys like it, hate it? Comment below, let me know, and once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I'm out.